Nine cents. The Australian Mining, oh, sorry, the Australian Metals and Mining Association has uh, supported the new government, uh, welcoming and congratulating the coalition's commitments to remove the carbon and the mining taxes, which it's saying has contributed to, to Australia's declining global competitiveness. Well, for more, we're joined by Scott Barkley, Executive Director at the Australian Mines and Metals Association in Brisbane. Scott, thanks very much for your time today. Does Pleasure. a coalition win on the weekend bring back any perceived lack of confidence? Has there been a dwindling in confidence in the, the mining space and does a coalition win, in your opin opinion, bring it back? We've, uh, we've seen the cancellation of some $150 million worth of mining projects that are otherwise viable where the natural resources are within this country and able to, to theoretically be brought to market. Uh, we are looking to the election of the coalition to restore confidence. Of itself, it has a, a temporary effect. Your preceding speaker spoke about green shoots, but what we need to see is the policies being delivered, the platform being delivered that the coalition was elected with. So that does really that extend, does that confidence. begin and end with repealing the mining tax and carbon tax, or is there more that you would like to see done? Because they're not it's taking anything in, in receipts, really. I mean, it's been a little bit of a disappointment for the government themselves. Well, absolutely. It, it begins certainly with tax reform and tax repeal, but the wider resource industry policies of the coalition are positive, as are in particular the workplace relations policies, and that's an area where we really do need to see some confidence restored for, for doing business and securing investment in this country. Who, who exactly makes up your membership so that we know where you're coming from? Oh, absolutely. Our membership is approximately 300 or so of the major mining producers in the country. I noticed your predecessor was talking about supports to the industry. We have both the oil and gas sectors and the mining sectors, but also right through the integrated support companies in terms of the maritime areas, services to mining. I noticed he was talking about the making the dongers, the, uh, mm. the accommodation miners live in, and that's also part of our membership. So you would be hoping, can I assume, that there'd be more of a discussion about changes to workplace laws and more of a debate about the Fair Work Act than probably we got in the election campaign? Uh, what, uh, what we're hoping for is the coalition to begin to implement the policy it was elected with, which is to start to do something about the union entry onto work sites, to restore some balance there, help with the, uh, the laws surrounding new projects, Greenfields projects in this country, and restore a tough cop on the beat to our construction industry. So discussion, yes, but also just getting on with it, moving through and implementing what they said they'll do. What do your members fear is, is the, the likely outcome should those issues not, not be addressed? Well, what we'll see is a continuing difficulty in successfully negotiating agreements. We'll see Australia's uh, reputation suffer further in terms of being a reliable place to do business, to employ people Isn't that all relative? And to invest. Isn't that relative? I sometimes find a little bit hard to, to understand people talking about sovereign risk and, and uncertainty investing in Australia when you have an incredibly stable regulatory system, you have a strong economy, you have, yes there are some cost issues associated, but I mean you're comparing Australia to other mining um, economies like Africa and so forth, Papua New Guinea, Mongolia. I mean, you can't sit there and say that there is more risk with investment here than in some of those other countries. The countries you, you identify and also areas of the, the New World like South America, but also our OECD counterparts in Canada and the coastal USA are all increasingly competing with us in terms of the natural resources we have. We're blessed as a country with national, natural resources, but we also have competitors. And you're quite right, in, certainly in uh, international terms, the rule of law, the stability of our political system and our economic system is world leading. And we saw that last week in a report from the World Economic Forum. We're ranked in the top 10 in those type of areas. However, we're ranked below 100 in terms of our labour utilisation and the effect of our labour laws. So it is always a balance in the eyes of investors. You're right, we're not seeking to, to overplay or to exaggerate, but our labour relations laws are having an effect and do disincentivise investment in this country. Like um, merger and acquisition activity in, in the mining space, I know, you're, I, mean, I know you're more into the workplace laws, but I'm just kind of trying to get a sense of how much the election unlocks, I suppose, in terms of people saying, you know, we've really been on hold in the Australian economy while we've been waiting for this election. Do you think there'll be more activity just amongst businesses? Um, what are you hearing even anecdotally? 
Well, I, I think there's certainly been some substantial mergers and acquisitions. There's been people divesting themselves of, of some of their holdings. That certainly will continue. What we hope to see is more money flow into the sector, and if that brings realignments in corporate structures, if it brings new investors uh, or changes in investment structures, so be it. But what we want to see is projects on the ground generating taxes, generating returns for the economy, and also generating jobs. Mm. And productivity has got to be a key issue, I would have thought. And, and do you see a direct link with workplace relace, relations reform and, and productivity? When, um, when Julia Gillard resigned, she, she made the famous statement that it's not everything but it's not nothing in regard to, to what was going on with her. It's the same with productivity. Workplace relations is not everything, but it also explains something material about productivity in this country. So we're looking for incentives for uh, investment uh, in productive infrastructure, certainly productive capital investment and, and processes of work, but also the employment side. We're looking to be able to have more workplaces challenged and able to explore productive work, different schedules, more reliable operation to better meet the needs of global markets. All right. Scott Barkland, thanks very much for joining us. Absolutely.